Leon Askin's most recognizable role to North American audiences was that of General Burkhalter. Despite common portrayals labeling Burkhalter as a Nazi, his character possessed nuances that transcended such a simple classification. It's more accurate to depict Burkhalter as a seasoned Imperial officer who by circumstance found himself collaborating with the Nazis. Burkhalter's indifference towards political matters stemmed from his singular focus on indulging in life's pleasures, the finest wines, the most exquisite cuisine, and the company of beautiful women. He embodied opportunism, a trait that blended with a reasonable level of competence. While his competency overshadowed even that of Colonel Klink, it also rendered him less endearing than Klink and notably less sympathetic than Sergeant Schultz. Burkhalter's charm lay in his ability to seamlessly transition between the strict, precise Prussian officer who frequently dangled the threat of a Russian front assignment over Klink and the affable aristocrat who reveled in wartime luxuries, attributing his enjoyment to the culinary delights, wines, and captivating women. Askin's superb acting prowess, coupled with his distinctive visage and voice, breathed life into the character, making it truly captivating. Born as Leon Ashkenazi on September 18, 1907, in Vienna, Leon Askin's journey began in the vibrant heart of Austria during the 1920s. His initiation into the world of performance commenced with his inaugural appearance on stage in 1926. Throughout the 1930s, he maintained a consistent presence in theater while also engaging in politically charged and intellectually stimulating cabarets in various European cities, Vienna, Dusseldorf, and eventually Paris, following the Nazis' ascent to power and the subsequent Auschwitz in Austria. With the onset of World War II, Askin found himself interned in France, labeled as an enemy alien. In 1940, he made a pivotal decision by immigrating to the United States before the German incursion into France. He seamlessly merged into the theatrical landscape, assuming roles both as an actor and a director within Washington, D.C.'s Civic Theater. However, his directorial undertaking of Shakespeare's poignant anti-war piece, Troilus and Cressida, suffered the unfortunate timing of debuting on December 5, 1941. As the United States entered the global conflict, Askin's path took a new trajectory. Enlisting in the U.S. Army Air Force, he ascended to the rank of technical sergeant, contributing his writing talents to craft orientation materials for soldiers destined for overseas service. Eventually stationed in England, he became an American citizen during this period of service. As the war drew to a close, he embarked on a poignant expedition to France in search of his family. The shattering revelation awaited him. His parents had been dispatched to the harrowing confines of the Theresienstadt concentration camp, their lives ultimately claimed by its horrors. Resuming life in the United States, Askin redirected his focus towards directing, this time gracing the illustrious stages of Broadway. His influence extended beyond his artistic pursuits. He played a foundational role as a founding member of Actors' Equity. In February 1952, a transformative opportunity knocked on Leon Askin's door through Max Arno, a scout from Columbia Pictures. This marked a pivotal juncture as Askin embraced his maiden silver screen offer, securing a role in the production titled Assignment Paris. With this, Askin transitioned into the realm of Hollywood, etching his path as an actor within its glitzy confines, a trajectory that would endure until August 1993. His cinematic journey encompassed over 60 Hollywood creations, a spectrum that ranged from prominent roles to more modest ones. Yet, his distinctive contribution lay in being an accent actor, his command of English commendable, but not quite achieving the lofty purity of the language echoing within the walls of Buckingham Palace. Amid the Hollywood tapestry, Askin's collaborative endeavors intertwined with a constellation of luminaries. The likes of Doris Day, Audrey Totter, Danny Kaye, Gloria Swanson, Peter Ustinov, Gene Simmons, and other notable stars adorned his cinematic orbit. 
in the realm of sharing the screen with these towering figures, Askin perceived an intriguing truth. The magnitude of the star seemingly correlated with the fluidity of the collaboration. A testament to this dynamic manifested in the film Do Not Disturb, where his on-screen partnership with Doris Day burgeoned into an off-screen friendship. In 1955, a chapter of change unfurled in Leon Askin's life as he parted ways with his first wife, Mimi. Following the finalization of their divorce, they embarked on a union with Annalise Ehrlich, a relationship that had been nurtured since 1952. As they bound their lives together, they chose to embark on an expansive wedding journey, a voyage that encompassed stops in Salzburg and Vienna. It was amidst these enchanting locales that destiny unfolded, showering Askin with film offers that beckoned his talents. Their journey's culmination was set in Hamburg, a city that held a fateful encounter. Ida Eyre, the proprietor of the Kammerspiel, extended an invitation to the couple. In a twist of fate, she sought an actor for Shaw's Mrs. Warren's profession. Askin, stepping into the role of Sir John Croft, exceeded expectations, thereby setting the stage for a remarkable trajectory. This triumph paved the way for an even greater milestone, his portrayal of Shakespeare's Othello two years later, a zenith that illuminated his stage career. Resuming their journey, the Askins found themselves in Munich, where Askins' presence in Thiel's films Lulu, alongside Nadja Tiller, resonated triumphantly. From Munich's embrace, Vienna beckoned, specifically the hallowed halls of the theater in the Josefstadt, a venue he affectionately dubbed his alma mater. It was within these very walls that he breathed life into Beckett's Waiting for Godot in partnership with the esteemed Otto Schenk. The early 1980s ushered in a period of relative tranquility in Leon Askin's life. During this interlude, he channeled his creativity into the written word, birth in the book, Quietude and Quest, a literary creation that saw the light of day in 1989. Then, like a sudden gust of wind altering the course of his narrative, 1985 introduced a surprising twist. A Japanese film company reached out to Askin, offering him the lead role in Deshima. This cinematic endeavor marked his maiden voyage to Japan, a transformative experience that spanned six weeks and etched an indelible mark on his journey. In 1993, the call of the director beckoned once again this time for his involvement in the creation of Okio Pinocchio, a film set against the backdrop of Brescia. In 1994, a significant homecoming unfolded as Leon Askin retraced his footsteps to his birthplace, Vienna, Austria. This return differed notably from his previous homecoming in 1955, as it was driven by professional considerations rather than personal ones. Unlike his earlier stint, this time, the intention wasn't to settle permanently. Instead, his return in later years was primarily motivated by familial ties. Starting from 1996, each summer bore witness to an enduring commitment by Leon Askin. He graciously lent his presence as a witness to the spectators of Alma, a showbiz Anz Ande, a polydrama authored by Joshua Sobel and directed by Paulus Manker, this immersive experience had a profound personal connection as he had a personal acquaintance with Alma Mahler Werfel. At the remarkable age of 93, Leon Askin found himself residing in an elderly care facility nestled in the opulent district of Dobling. His legacy was further enshrined as he received an honor of utmost significance. The President of Austria bestowed upon him the designation of a professional professor. This title was not a mere accolade, but a true professional recognition, underscoring his exceptional contributions to his craft. In 1993, Askin returned permanently to Vienna, where he continued to work occasionally in film and theater, with his last film credits coming in 2001. In 2002, at the age of 95, he married media specialist Anita Wicker. Regrettably, on June 3, 2005, Leon Askin's journey came to a peaceful close in Vienna 
succumbing to the embrace of natural causes. He had achieved the remarkable age of 97, a testament to the vitality with which he lived. His final resting place is within the Zentral Friedhof. Goodbye and rest in peace to legendary actor Leon Askin.